you are ever looking for a complete math curriculum that goes from counting to calculus, then look no further than Ray's Arithmetic. And I'm talking about a curriculum that, depending on your sources, could be free or nearly free. We're going to talk about all the pros of this curriculum. We're going to break down all the different titles, what grades they're uh, geared towards, because it, it is a little bit different. We're also going to talk about the story behind these, the history, who was Joseph Ray, how did these books come about, and if you're just looking for a classical education that has lots of word problems, that is very challenging, that has a lot of morals woven into it, um, that men like Thomas Edison uh, studied under, then again, look no further than raise arithmetic. We're gonna dive into all of it in this video, so stay tuned. Uh, house. Hi everybody, this is Karen. Welcome back to our channel called Our House. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I like to do videos on great homeschool resources, especially ones that are very affordable and large family friendly. I also really like to talk about the Robinson curriculum. That is what we use. And the way that this ties in is that if you are looking for an alternative to Saxon, which is recommended with the Robinson curriculum, then this is something that is already available to you for free if you signed on for online access. The Robinson curriculum comes with the CDs. However, you can also pay a very low yearly fee, I believe it's $36, where you can have access to the curriculum online. Now in doing so, you can print everything out very easily, you can view everything on your computer, but also you have access to a lot of great bonuses. And one of those bonuses is the complete set of Ray's Arithmetic. Everything from the first book all the way to the higher ones like Calculus and all the answer keys. Which you could, if you dig around, find these books for free online. There are a few resources that I will talk about. However, I have a hard time finding those higher math ones and it's on there with RC Online, which is fabulous. So this is an alternative if you wanted to do something else besides Saxon or for any family out there not doing the Robinson curriculum, looking for a math curriculum, then this is a great way to go. We're going to talk about all the pros. But before we dive into all of that, again, I invite you to subscribe and let's talk a little bit about who was Joseph Ray. It's really an interesting story. They settled in West Virginia. They had a huge farm. I believe it was 130 something acre farm. And so Joseph Ray, you know, he farmed. That kept him really busy, but he was always more interested in figures than farming. And he'd go to his local little school a few months out of the year. But at that time, Cincinnati, Ohio was really like the metropolis of the Midwest. So as soon as he could, I believe 16, he had crossed over, he made it to Ohio, and he was actually teaching in a school in Cincinnati. His dream was always to go to college though. So he saved up, he denied himself everything except the bare necessities so that he could go to the University of Ohio in Athens. However, he ran out of money, so he had to come back and he went back to teaching. However, in reading up his story, it seems that he stopped teaching and he went to medical school and he did finish and got his MD at the age of 22. I can't believe that. 22, he was already a doctor. And so he practiced medicine up until he got hired on with a high school to teach arithmetic and from there his life obviously changed. Now you can't really talk about Joseph Ray without mentioning his brother also because it was said that his brother was actually the mathematical genius of the family and that his name is his name was Mose. He was 15 years younger than Joseph Ray. Now he's a very different kind of character. He lived with his aunt Nancy, but it was said that he didn't really like women. He was just by himself. Um, he has kind of a tragic ending, really. He he was brilliant at math. People would bring him math problems that nobody else could solve. He kind of had this little thing with Joseph Ray criticizing his books. At one point, he said that the higher arithmetic books were good for children, but not for adults, which if you look at his higher ones, it, they are not for slackers. Those are tough books. So there was probably a little bit of maybe friendly competition, sibling rivalry there, but their endings are very different. Mose, I think, I believe he drank. He squandered away all the family money. He lost the farm. At one point he went to New Mexico in search for gold and then he got cancer. He battled it for a while and then he just, he died. Joseph Ray, on the other hand, he just was a very humble, 
hardworking man. He loved his students. He really wanted them to have good moral character. It was said that if he was teaching a problem and there was some disruption going on in the classroom, he would address that first before going on and uh, working out the problem. And he would be out on the playground with his students, interacting with them, just really wanting them to have good moral character, being hardworking, and you can see that in his problems. His books are very much word heavy and woven into it are a lot of problems dealing with morals and history also, which is another bonus if you're doing the Robinson curriculum. Uh, he wanted to include kind of historical facts in there also. But yeah, it's about hardworking, kind of pioneer type people and just good. Um, and it's like the McGuffey readers, really. It was around that same time where these textbooks were taking off and becoming the standard in the country. By the late 1800s, early 1900s, this was being taught all over America. We are still using his books today. They are still being sold. Families, believe it or not, they are still using Ray's Arithmetic. And I'm going to talk about why it actually really goes well with, with, with what I was reading from Ruth Beechick's book on math. The first stage of learning is really kind of using manipulatives and children seeing subtraction, seeing adding. But then the second stage is you really want to transition them to mental math. And this is also very similar to the Robinson curriculum, memorizing all their math facts, the importance of that. And that is actually how Ray's Arithmetic, the first book, starts out just by counting and then it goes on through all the mental math. You don't need a workbook for this first book, and it is meant to take you to two years, grade two. So this kind of goes with that whole Ruth B. Chick, same kind of style with math. First, you want to do a little manipulatives, get the concepts down, and then work on the mental math. Before then, you can move on to more abstract math, figures and numbers and such. All right, so very quickly, let's talk about some pros of this curriculum. Number one is that you can print it out, and it's just very easy to make a copy for each child. It's very affordable. If you have RC online, you can find it for free. You can find this book for free. This new one, I will link some sources below. There are even video tutorials. Uh, there is a raisearithmetic.wordpress site where a man who also teaches for the Ron Paul curriculum, he did videos for all of these lessons. So this is great if you're homeschooling through a rough time and you need a little help. Uh, there's tools like this available to you. Another big pro is that you are solving problems in real life. All of the examples used, there's tons of word problems, they have to do with real life much like Life of Fred, which I know is very appealing to a lot of people because of that. I know it was to me. Being able to see whatever the math concept used in real life. Another thing, because he really favored word problems, he was able to tie in different things like history. For example, here's a couple problems. General Washington was born A.D. 1732 and lived 67 years. In what age did he die? Also, Alfred the Great died A.D. 901. Thanks to the signing of Magna, this is here, Charta, was 314 years. Thanks to the American Revolution, 560 years. In what year did the American Revolution begin? So as you can see, this is great uh, if you're doing just like a three R's curriculum. And if you're concerned about what about history, what about this? Ray's Arithmetic actually has woven in also lots of history. And Life of Fred is the same way also. So I think if you like Life of Fred for those reasons, for the real life problems and the other subjects woven into it, but you're concerned that there might be some gaps or it's not enough, then Ray's Arithmetic might be a really great alternative for you because it also has those two things and there are no gaps here. There is a lot of repetition. You will not have a shortage of problems. I can promise you that. So the first book is Ray's New Primary Arithmetic and this is geared for ages, well, I would say grades one and two. I've used it uh, with my son as young as five years old, but I'm also using it with my seven-year-old and eight-year-old. So this is for grades one and two. Now to tell you a little bit about Ray's primary arithmetic, you, it does require parental help due to the age of the student involved. No key is provided for this, so don't try to find an answer key for this. It doesn't exist because it's really just so easy. As long as you can count from zero to ten, 
you're fine. It begins with counting and oral exercises, and it ends with a problem like three rabbits for 30 cents, sold them for 39 cents. How many cents did he gain on the three rabbits, on each rabbit? So it roughly takes you to second grade. It has 94 pages. Now, after this, I found with RC Online rudiments of arithmetic, but I don't see this a lot of other places. This is something that I only saw with RC Online. This is geared for three and four. This is mental and written exercises for beginners. However, every other list and the next book with RC Online too after that is the intellectual arithmetic book. Ray's new intellectual arithmetic book. And that is geared towards grades three and four. Again, this book is meant to take you two years. Now, the student probably will need some help here as well, but they should be allowed to reference the key as the key shows how the problems are worked. So the answer keys are not just give you the answer, but in many times they also show you how to work the problem out. The difficult ones, I've seen that for explanations for difficult problems, which is really nice. They're learning to add, subtract, multiply, divide, fractions, interest, percentage. A problem at the end of this book is James sold 10 oranges for 40 cents and gained 33 and one third percent. How much should each orange cost? And it's suggested for grades three and four, but your mileage may vary. It is 140 pages long. So after this, we have this really thick book, and it is Ray's new practical arithmetic, and this is geared for grades five and six. There is also Ray's elementary arithmetic, which is also for grades five through six. So I believe when they say Ray's arithmetic at this um, level is two books, I believe these are the two books. We have Ray's new practical arithmetic and Ray's elementary arithmetic. The order is this one first, the elementary arithmetic, and then this one, the new practical arithmetic. So you have two books for these two grades. <laughs> Just so many problems here. You will not have a shortage of problems, that's for sure. And here I have an answer key for um, intellectual and practical. So both books are in this one answer key. Now what comes after the new practical arithmetic is Ray's new algebra, elementary algebra, which is geared for grades seven through eight. Then we also have key, um, Ray's new higher arithmetic, also seven to eight. After that, we have Ray's new higher algebra. There's also Ray's elements of astronomy, uh, Ray's geometry and trigonometry, and Ray's differential and integral calculus, and even Ray's surveying and navigation. Those are the titles of all the Ray's books. Now with the Robinson curriculum, you get the Ray's new primary arithmetic, that's for grades one and two, the first book, Ray's rudiments of arithmetic, three to four, again, three, eight, uh, grades three to four, Ray's new intellectual arithmetic, the answer keys, Ray's elementary arithmetic, which is for five to six, grades five and six, and the key, you also get Ray's new practical arithmetic, five to six. You also get Ray's new elementary algebra, uh, the answer key, Ray's new higher arithmetic, the answer key, Ray's new higher algebra, the answer key, geometry and trigonometry, and Ray's differential and integral calculus. Now, if you do not have RC online, another very economical way is from Dollar Homeschool. They have the whole series, all the books, even the astronomy one and the navigation, they have them all on one CD for $59, which is really not bad considering it's complete a complete math curriculum that you can just print for all your children, $59. You can go that route if you don't have RC, or you can try to find some of these books for free online. They're out there. It just might be a little bit harder to find, especially the last ones. Now, something that comes with the Dollar Homeschool CD for $59 and also comes for free with the Robinson Curriculum online is this Dollar Homeschool's Race Arithmetic guide. This is written by Sherry Hayes, a mother of 15. I will link her channel below. She has great content. She just came out with this free Teach Your Child How to Read program that's really amazing. I've been looking through it, so I'll put all her information below. She wrote this guide 
for raise arithmetic. It tells you, for example, raise primary arithmetic is meant to be is meant to be done totally without paper and pen. Uh, she would not recommend doing these books with children younger than seven. It's two years worth of work. So she's just really giving you a lot of tips here. Um, as a mom of 15 with lots of experience, how to use these books. She talks about in the guide how to bind these books. I just did a comb bind. As you can see here, it's my favorite way to bind stuff. But you can also print this in booklet form. You could do that. She also talks about how they use their copy books because you're going to need to work out problems. Your children are going to need to work out problems and some rules and guidelines, how to teach your kids to keep neat and orderly copy books. So that's another thing. She also talks about record keeping and she's even designed some forms for you, how to keep track of what your children are doing with race arithmetic. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. If you like videos like this, then please let me know by hitting like on this video and I will make more of them. And if you have any questions about anything in this video, then please leave them in the comments below. I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Do 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 do